here. This is really phenomenal. I have people here who their hearts and their comments and they're so thankful. But let me go on to Michelle. I, if, if Please, please. I know you have a few comments yourself. So Michelle, Pastor Michelle mckinney Hammond. <laughs> You know, what I love about your story was your persistence. And we all know that there's a very common myth in Christendom that if it's God, it's easy. And bling, he just waves his magic wand and it happens. And I always wonder, you know, which Bible have these people read? Because I don't, I don't know at all. So I would like you to, to speak to that, you know, the, the process of God birthing uh, promises in our life, um, and what our posture should be um, as we wait on God. And, and when I say wait, I'm not um, meaning you sit down and fold your hands, but uh, actively waiting on him, which is, you know, serving him anyhow till what you're waiting for comes through. But could you just speak to that? Uh, you know, what our mindset should be, what our posture should be, um, our attitude should be, uh, and when do we know when we should let go or when we should press in? Praise the Lord. Thank you for that question. Amazing question. Wow. You know, God makes promises to us and the Bible itself is full of promises and he makes personal promises to us as well as we, as, as we, um, as we, um, continue to gather experience and continue to develop relationships with him and as we continue to grow. But do you know, there are thousands of ifs in the Bible. If the if doesn't manifest, the promise isn't gonna come through. Imagine you wanting to plant something and you put the seed in the ground and you don't go back to water it, is it going to grow? That's the million dollar question. If you don't water it, it's gonna die. How do we water the seeds that we sow? The promises that God makes to us, how do we water it? We don't sit there twiddling our thumbs, it doesn't make sense. It's not gonna work. We have a part to play. God is willing to play his own part, but we can't sit there sleeping, dreaming, eating, and just think that it's gonna fall on our laps. It's not gonna happen like that. Until we learn that there are things that we need to do to put in place that seed that you sowed is not going to germinate. It's not going to bring any harvest. You're not going to be able to reap the harvest. Now, some of the seeds I sowed at the initial stage was tenacity not accepting no for an answer, not giving up, resilience, doggedness, diligence. Those are some of the things that you have to bring to bear to make the seed that you have sown to grow. God is going to be looking at you like this, waiting for you to play your part. He's willing. He's able, he has made the promise, but if you don't do your part, it's not gonna happen, my dear. It won't happen. You can daydream all you like. You can cross your fingers all you like. You can touch wood all you like. None of which are of God, of course, but Doing wishful thinking is not going to help you. Get up and go. Act. Roll up your sleeves. Pull up your socks. Knock on doors. Get help. Look for mentors. Look for those who, who have been there, seen it, done it in that industry. 
that you're looking at, that you're focusing on. Oh, and by the way, did you ask God first? Did you ask God first the way you should go? Even if he has made a promise to you, you still need to ask him, how should I do this, Lord? Fast, pray. He will talk to you. You are a child of God. He talks to all of us. And there's no prayer that falls to the ground. He answers all prayers. Even when he does not answer, that, that too is an answer. When he does not answer, that is also an answer. That's speaking volumes to you. Take a back step. Weigh the options. Why hasn't God answered? Maybe you're asking out of season. Maybe it's not yet time. Maybe it's not the way he wants you to go about it. But my dear, persist. Be like the persistent widow. Don't give up until you get an answer. And he said his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways. And so on and so forth. So what am I saying here? Always learn to do things God way, God's way. The examples are all over the Bible. Read about the story of this person. Read about uh, the, the, this part of uh, the, maybe Acts of Apostles. What did Jesus say? How would Jesus have done it? There are always examples in the Bible. Take it back to the Lord in prayer. He will tell you, yes, my daughter. No, my daughter. Oh, listen. When I wanted to start a new business, because I love challenges, I always like, what's next, Lord? What should I do next? I take even the mundane things to him in prayer. Do you get what I'm saying? I go to him and I say, listen, Lord, I went to him on one occasion. I said, Lord, you know, I've been up that mountain, up that mountain. I've conquered that one. I'm on top of that mountain. I'm on top of that mountain. I'd, I'd like a new challenge. I want to climb another mountain. What should I do next? I want a new business. And he showed me a new business. He showed me a carousel that was full of newspapers, one after the other, hot off the press. Hmm, printing. What else can you say that is? Printing. But you know what? There was something that was new on the block, and that was large format printing. A nephew of mine had been speaking to me and said, Auntie, ah, have you noticed that there's a new type of printing that people are doing in the country now? I said, what is it? He told me about it. I was really interested. And I went to a printing fair abroad. And I saw how these large media rolls were being printed and were falling to the ground with images, beautiful, colorful images on them. And I was so attracted to them. These are things that you use for billboards, for roll-up banners, for floor mats, and so on and so forth. I got really excited. Rather than go for the large, uh, rather than go for offset printing, which God showed me, I just, in my head, said to myself, oh, look at this printing, it's beautiful. And I bought the machines that did the large format printing. I made a big mistake, a very, very big mistake. The business took off, it was fantastic. For, like the, for the first three years, we were making a lot of money. Guess what? The government came clamping down. And they said, oh, all our skylines are, 
uh, uh, dotted with all these large format prints and billboards. Oh, no, 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 no. We've got to pull these down. And that's how the business went down. I went back to the Lord in prayer. And he showed me again. And this time, what I'd done wrong. I was supposed to go into offset printing, but I went into large format printing. I was thinking in my heart that this is printing, to be it's printing, it's printing. Until I changed to offset printing, we had been losing money. That's just a clear example that we need to seek the face of the Lord and we need to learn to obey God. Obedience is very important. When we don't obey, we get our, our, our fingers burnt and we learn the hard way. Um, so we must listen. Wait till you hear what God is saying. Wait till he drops maybe scriptures in your heart. These are things that I've experienced in my life. He drops answers in my, in, into my heart. Sometimes it's through dreams. Sometimes somebody walks up to you and tells you what you need to do. And you find that it's an answer to the question you've been asking God. And then before the end of the week, maybe one or two more people are confirming it. Those are some of the ways that we get our answers. God doesn't come down. He sends people to us. And he touches our lives in ways and manners that we never think or can imagine. But speak to us, he does. To every single child of God, he speaks to us. In one way or the other. We just need to listen. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Michelle, did that answer your question? <laughs> oh, can't hear you. Michelle, you're mute. I just wanted her to legitimize that because, uh, you know, we talk about process a lot and everyone's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They forget that we're partnering with God and that God is not our slave, you know, that he's given us everything pertaining to life in the natural and godliness in the spirit. And that when we utilize what he's given us, then he backs us, he's the investor, but we must do the work, like she said, and you can say that a lot, but when someone who has made it and been through it says it, then it carries weight. So that's why I wanted from her perspective for her to share that, because I think it's a very important thing. We live in a society of such immediate gratification uh, that I think that there's an expectancy for immediacy, uh, immediate bling bling, you know, and when it doesn't happen, then people get disappointed with God and they resort to their own means or, you know, here in Africa, sometimes we even decide to go and get the, 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 the juju man to help us. Now I'm, I'm mixing my, <laughs> my African, but you know, God isn't moving fast enough. So I'm going to go to my village. And um, that is not the answer. It, it is process because God is building capacity. He's not just giving you a promise. You now have to have capacity to hold the promise. You know, in pregnancy, you don't go from the seed being planted to the nine month uh, thing. The body has to stretch. And if it stretched that fast within a month, what would happen? We'd kill ourselves. So I, I just wanted her to legitimize that because I love her so much and I love her story so much. And um, I believe that when she shares it, it just has such massive weight and um, that we have to learn to not just embrace the process, but actually celebrate it and anticipate that God is preparing us for greater things, not just to receive them, but to be able to sustain and maintain them. And that takes process. And amen, amen. Thank you for that. Absolutely um, um, described. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, Prophetess Leslie, do you have a question? Okay. Yes, um, Apostle, we honor you on this side of the world. God bless you and happy, happy birthday again. Um, in from America, from the U.S. <laughs> yes, um, I've been following you for a very long time. And one thing that I admire about you, besides the fact that you're such a successful businesswoman, is the fact that you are able to, one, stay level in God. 
which as we can see, as successful as you are, God is the only thing that comes out of your mouth. That is very admirable in a society where once you get into a boardroom, it's taboo for you to even mention the name of God. And so I just wanted you to encourage us a little bit on how you stay so bold in Christ. And then the second question is, as a mom of five, I know the balancing act is like, wow, and a wife as well, too. But I've read so many of your things and the way you even revere your husband is extremely admirable. And the way you juggle your sons is extremely admirable. And so... We want all the wisdom on all of that. Well, how I stay so bold in Christ, how I can juggle, right? My uh, businesses, I suppose. Yes. Uh, with um, the home front. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. Um, I thank God uh, for that question. Um, it's a very important question. Now, the reason why I can stay so bold in Christ and not care whose ox is God, wherever I'm speaking. Sometimes I'm in a place where I'm surrounded by Muslims. I'm still busy talking about my God. I'm talking about Christ. I'm mentioning Jesus. Makes them uncomfortable in their seat. I don't care. I just carry on and I say everything I want to say the way it is and the way it comes from my heart. That's why I said, I don't care whose ox is God. I say it the way it is. The reason I'm able to stay bold in him is because he's the one who did it. He is the one who brought me this far. He is the one who had been opening the, all the doors I never looked the way of the oil industry. I didn't. But I thank God that when it came the way it came, as I explained it from the, at the beginning of this uh, meeting, that I had the wisdom to take advantage of it and not walk away when I was given the first no. I chose to go back. Persistence. I chose to say, I need to make something out of this. Others would have closed that door and it would have been closed forever. I went back three more times after that, offering other business proposals. I suggested, oh, I can provide transportation, moving crude from one location to another. I suggested catering services on FPSOs. FPSOs are big, large um, tankers or ships. Yeah, call them ships that are, you know, on, on, the, on, on, on the waters where there are engineers working to bring out crude from deep down in, in the bottom of the sea. I said, I'll come and cater for them for food. All that was turning was turned down one after the other. I did not allow it to discourage me. It took three years to keep going back, to keep writing those letters, to keep uh, you know, ap applying for the license. Many people would, would not have waited that long. They would never have gone back, but I was determined to make something out of it. God opened the door. Many would have turned back is what I'm saying, but when I saw that door open, I chose to hold on to the, to the door handle and not let go. Maybe because of the type of person he created me. But then if that's not how he, he created you, you can learn from others how they did it. 
And that's why we're having this talk. You understand? So because I know that he is the one that kept on opening the doors. By the way, you know, I mentioned that even after getting the license, it took another three years to get partners, technical partners. To God be the glory. So all of that, and I could see that it was God that was helping me as I went along. Yes, I was playing my part quite all right. There's no doubt about that. But I held on to him. I did not let go. And when I saw that he was the one that brought me this far to this point, would I now renege on my part of the covenant that I had made, a, 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 made to him? Lord, bless me. In return, I will work for you all the days of my life. That promise that I made to God is what has made me rooted in him to answer your question. Now, in all of this, there's the home front. You have a husband, you have children. And as I continue to grow, of course, the grandchildren started coming. You have to learn to balance things. God made your husband the head of the family. You have to recognize that. He said that women must submit to their husbands. There are many women Many, many who are not willing to do that. The submission part. They believe, oh, we are supposed to submit to one another. I tell you, the most important part of that submission is heavier on the woman. Just as love your wife's part is heavier on the man. Yes, of course, the man, the woman is also supposed to love her husband, but it's heavier on the husband to love his wife. Yes, the husband is also supposed to submit to his wife, but it's heavier on the woman to submit to her husband. Do you get? So you have to keep that at the back of your mind that yes, you're in submission to God, but if he has put a representative in your home, of himself and you're not submitting to him and you're ignoring him and you want to go straight straight to God to submit to God directly, he's not gonna like it. If you can't submit to the one you can see in the physical, why are you trying to submit to me that you can't see in the physical? That's the way he looks at it. It doesn't matter what your husband is doing wrong to you or to the family. Don't let that be the criteria for you to misbehave or for you to stop submitting to him. The only things that you can't submit to are things like, for instance, if he tells you to do something that is not according to the will of God, no, 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 you say no. Put your foot down and say no that you won't do that. You must put your foot down and say no to that. Anything that is not according to the will of God, and we have the Bible as our guide. And every other thing you're supposed to submit to him. People, women don't like hearing the submission of their finances to their husbands. They don't like hearing it. But God expects us to submit everything to our husbands in obedience. Yes, let's go and read about how Sarah uh, was in full submission to Abraham and she called him Lord. Many of the women in the olden days were calling their husbands Lord, showing them respect. Respect your husband. Your husband is supposed to respect you. 
If he doesn't, it doesn't mean that you should disrespect him. You, if you do know better, if you're reading your Bible and you want to be in obedience to God, by all means, show respect to your husband, regardless of what he's doing to you. I assure you that if you call the attention of God into your matter, by dealing with it on your knees rather than from your mouth, God will come to your aid. He will fight for you. Don't ever try to fight for yourself. It won't work. It's not the will of God. The way to fight for yourself is to take the matter to the Lord in prayer. Let me give you an example. When we were about to begin to get ready to build our home where we've moved into and we were drawing the plans out, I said to my husband, oh, um, I'd like to have a fellowship center in our home. He said, no. When he said no, I didn't say a word. I just went into my prayer room. And I prayed. I said, Lord, you heard your son. You know the fellowship center is for your work. Please, I really do want to set up this fellowship center. Even if it's just for the family, I really do want to set it up so that we have somewhere we can meet with you. I know you're everywhere, but we want to set that place apart just for you. And I left it at that. The following morning, as soon as my husband opened his eyes, without saying, without waiting for me to say good morning to him, he was the first to wake. He said, follow and show. Tell the architect to put the fellowship center in the, in the drawings. That's a clear example. Respect your husband. Submit to your husband. You understand? Don't have a chip on your shoulder. Whatever God has, you know, created you to be or achieve, it doesn't matter to God. Submit to your husband. Be level-headed. Do your duties first as a wife and then as a mother and as a grandmother. As you are doing that, you are warming the heart of God. He's loving you for it. And for as long as he's loving you, for you doing it the way he wants you to do it, don't forget, he's the he want, he's who instituted marriage and he wants you to, to be happy in your marriage. He will support you if you're doing it the right way. If you want to fight for yourself, he's going to take a back step and watch you while you're busy trying to fight your own battles. You're not gonna win, I assure you. But if you do it the right way, he will fight for you. I'm sure he spoke to my husband in his dream. And before you knew it, we got our fellowship center. Now, you need to prioritize your time. You want to remain as a businesswoman. You want to be able to keep your family where it should be, where God wants it to be, a happy home, somewhere your husband and children always want to keep coming back to every day when they go to work or when they go to school. Somewhere where there's joy, where there's happiness not where there's strife and anger. It's up to the woman to keep it together. I'm not saying that all men are good. Neither am I saying all women are good. I mean, it's up to us to, to make the right decisions at the right time and to, to want to be focused and to want to do things God's way. Most of the time, and things that break marriages, are uh, when we choose to do it our way or we choose the highway. 
That's what makes it break. When we're not doing it God's way. When a woman feels that she's being cheated, she's being misused, she's being overworked, uh, she's being abused, the first place to go is to God. On your knees. It works all the time. If you're busy trying to justify your actions, let me remind you, with every action, there's a reaction. With every reaction, there's a, there's, there's a counter reaction. With every counter reaction, there's another reaction on top of that. And it goes on and on and on and on, which is the reason the, the Bible tells us that before the sun sets, we make sure that any squabbles, we settle it before that day ends because Satan is right there waiting to help you water it and escalate it and start putting evil thoughts in the minds of both of you. In likewise manner, coming to the children now, in likewise manner, I believe it strongly in my heart that there are virtues that God has given the woman to be able to carry all these things and balance all these things and be able to keep the home front together and nurture our children to adulthood from the time the seed is planted and, and, and we birth those children. He's given us so many different qualities that help us to be able to prosper in all the areas that he has blessed us with to be able to bring our children up right. It's up to us to teach them. And as we are teaching them how to live, how to eat, how to dress, how to behave, we must be teaching them about God. We must teach them about teach the next generation about the God that has brought us this far. Because if you don't teach them, they're gonna have to learn the hard way from outside. You don't want that. So make them have to retrace them steps, steps back to God after the damage has been done. No, catch them young, let them know that there's a God in our lives that guides our, us and our families that we need to develop a relationship with by ensuring that your, you, you and your, your family, you're all praying together morning and night. Everybody's out there in the afternoons, but the Bible tells us that we should pray without ceasing. We must teach them to pray without ceasing. That even when they're on their own, regardless of their age, they have learned to bring every matter to the Lord in prayer. We have to set aside time for every family member and integrate it with the time that we spend running our businesses. Let everybody know that, oh, I'm not going to be available between this time and this time. I'm going to be in a meeting. Oh, okay. Maybe you go to work eight to five. They know you're at work, but that doesn't stop you from reaching out maybe to the husband or to any one of the children, letting them know that, uh, okay, uh, you're, you're following up on their day, finding out how they're doing during the day. A phone call, a simple phone call helps them to know that, oh, mom, mom is still looking after our interests. Oh, mom is still loving us. Oh, uh, uh, you know, having a chat with your husband and even blowing each other kisses, <laughs> not curses, <laughs> you understand? So being whom as a woman, God has created you to be, to be able to juggle those things. He has given, he has put it in our hearts. We just need to make the best of it, make the most use of it, recognizing it, that it's already in us. We just need to make use of it and apply wisdom. He's given us wisdom. 
special wisdom, special grace. We just need to apply it, use it. Draw up a plan for your family. Short term, medium term, long term. Just the same way that you draw them up for your business. Draw it up for your family too. The daily ones, you've written it up maybe the night before. Things you need to do the next day. Tick them as you go along. Book appointments for your business. Let your, 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 your children know you're not going to be available. Let your husband know you're not going to be available between this time and this time. Right? Let your clients know that this is the time you'll be able to join the meeting, that you can, can see them or you can uh, travel. Da, 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 da. It's all about balancing, integrating everything. It's planning. And as you all know, if we don't plan, we're planning to fail. Wisdom, planning, uh, uh, reaching out to each member of the family, being there at the right time, ensuring that you're, you're communicating with your husband and your children. Communication is very, very, very important. You don't communicate, you're gonna cause strife. Communication, open your mouth. And then how do you communicate? Don't just open your mouth and say the first thing that comes to your heart or to your mind. It could be from the devil for all you know. Think about it first before you open your mouth. And then think, how's the other party going to receive what you're about to say. How would you feel if you were the person at the other end receiving that from your spouse? How would Jesus, you're trying to make a decision. Ask yourself, how would Jesus do it? And God has put it in our hearts to know how Jesus would answer, how he would act. But a lot of times, we don't want that. They'll say, oh, that's Jesus. And he's come and gone. Oh, this is life now. And times have changed. That's not the way to console yourself. Be realistic. Because we need to do things God's way, first and foremost. Because that's the only way that we can get his ears. If you're working against his will, you're already fighting God. If you're fighting God, you're not going to win the battle with your husband or with your children, if it's your children that are giving you problems. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. And I think it's very important that um, someone of your caliber always reiterates this because there's a narrative going on that, you know, women are in a league of their own. We don't have to submit. And so someone like me, when I say it, I'm, I'm always looked at side eyes. But when you reiterate that your success is rooted in the principles of God and what God has ordained, I think it makes an impact for everyone who's listening to understand. So thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We've taken so much time. I, I know that we um, allocated about 45 minutes, but we've gone over an hour, but this has been really, really amazing. Thank you. Can we just take one more question? Because I know that um, a few people have listed. And what I'll do is I'll compile all the questions and send them to your office so that maybe we could email the responses later to them because we can't handle all of them on, on, on the panel. But let me take one more. So there's the. Um, Tunde Aji is asking, at what point did you think of giving up? If you ever thought of giving up and how did you manage to pick yourself up? I, he's asking so many questions, but I'll just focus on this. Thank you. At what point did I think of giving up? There was no point that I thought of giving up. One of my mantras is, Never accept no for an answer. 
one of the points that maybe others would have given up, as I said earlier, the first one, the first time when I was told to tell the American company that um, they can come and invest in Nigeria, but they're not going to allow them to pick, lift crude. And when they said, no, we don't want to um, invest in Nigeria, that would have been the end of that. I would have gone back to my passion business. And that, 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 it, that no other doors would have opened from the oil industry. That door would have been shut completely. And I would, I would have carried on being a fashion designer, most probably. The other point, the, the other time when I could have given up was when I was told, why don't you apply for a, an oil exploration license? <laughs> that seemed like, uh, uh, you know, something that needed a big laugh. There was no one my age, no one my gender that had anything to do with oil exploration in the whole of Nigeria. I don't know about other countries, but I think maybe even in the whole world, if I do on day, I could have walked away out of discouragement because it seemed like a big discouragement. It's like you saying, um, okay, uh, Mrs. Alakija, uh, surely you should be able to uh, go to the moon. <laughs> go to the moon, where do I start? You gotta be a joker. That's how it seemed at the time. And I did not turn back. The way the world would have given up, no. I took on the challenge after I got over the initial shock. And I began to see that this could be God that's leading me. So there we are. I never give up. I never wanted to give up. There was no point in time where it ever crossed my mind. Wow, <laughs> resilient. And I, I, I never, is... I never do till this day. I persist in anything yes. and everything. Yes, and I think this is like what I will call divine resilience, because you know you are on a path and a journey that God has sent you on. Don't give up. You have to. You have an assignment that He's going to ask once when you go to heaven. You know, did you fulfill this assignment that I gave you on earth? So I guess from that <laughs> alone and take, and take no for an answer. And then that is great because we talk about resilience in a different form, but coupled with like the spiritual aspect of resilience, you know, which is quite evident in it. So like a, and I, I keep coming back to this, referencing this purpose driven journey. So a lot of young people are lost. And I think Michelle also touched on this and Nancy also touched on this. A lot of young people are lost and the sort of validation that they seek are more external and more material. And they forget about the spiritual aspect and your purpose, right? And your salvation. And you have shown us that that is more important than money any day. And you would, because I've even been in scenarios with you where she, you don't even want people to talk about the wealth and your, your ranking. She didn't like it. She, I don't want to to be ranked on Forbes and all of that, even though she had all the acumen and the resources. Her focus was never on her, you know, her wealth, but the purpose and the agenda that she's been given by God. And it's so humbling, you know, because, and I, okay, I have learned so much from just, you know, to you and you giving me the opportunity. I believe that's also divine to mentor me and to, to support me. Um, on my journey because sometimes we get confused by what is important 
you know, um, we, we, we get confused by the accolades and the, and the external validation and we forget to go back to the drawing board. And you talked, even in your history, you talked about the opportunity to travel outside at a young age and that was setting a foundation for something you were going to do. Even the opportunity produced to this oil business, even from the entire thing changed, and then you persisted and got another platform to actually go into. God always puts things in our way that are supposed to guide us to meet a destiny. And it's like he gave you, I always look at it, when I think of you in the life, I think about kingdom treasurer the keys for God's work and kingdom treasure is a few but they're blessed with a lot of wealth because that wealth is supposed to do God's work right and it's supposed to also evangelize and an experience as an example for people to kind of be drawn closer to God because when they see success people want to be associated with success they see success they want to understand the story behind that success and they are drawn to God through your success and I really thank God that he's allowed you to be humble enough and receptive enough for him to use you for his work. And I pray that the next decade of your journey is going to be healthy, blessed with more wealth, you know, more opportunity to mentor people and to continue the good work and for you to also have peace of mind, divine peace um, in and you, in your business, in your family, for all the things that are in your heart to be fulfilled according to his purpose for your life. And that is my blessing for you for the next decade. And I'm really looking forward because I am promising everybody on here that in the next 10 years, the sequel to her book, we're going to have another wonderful conversation. She'll be here, she'll be stronger, she'll be wealthier, she'll be, you know, be able to give us even more nuggets. Wiser. <laughs> Wiser, yes, yes. Because to me, this is a lifelong journey and we are so grateful that you've been you've given us time you know you're a very busy woman and uh, we do appreciate the time so i wouldn't take too much I, we're going to do this again mom i'm going to be bugging you we're going to do this again but i want it to be a fiscal event so you know and we're going to plan it we'll take time to plan this um properly and you know we'll pick a location that is conducive to your schedule um and but definitely there's going to be a part two to you know, there are people that were there need with questions and, you know, they want to know more. And, um, of course, we're pressed for time, so we can't give all of that. And I, I would love to give the platform now to Pastor Michelle McKinney Hammond to share a closing prayer with us um, and also lessons on you um, as you go on the next decade of your journey. And thank you all for tuning in. And I'm so grateful and thankful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's as if I can see all of you. <laughs> I can feel you. God bless Amazing. you. I'm, I'm glad that you're best. I pray that you shall be well with every single one of you. And that will be a that will definitely be a different story to tell by the time we meet again. By God's Amen. grace. Positive ones in Jesus' name. Testimonies. Amen. 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 And I can attest to the validity of everything she shared. I had a chance to visit her home because she lives across from my sister in Nigeria. We had such a wonderful evening, but the thing that um, impressed me the most was just the, the atmosphere of peace. There was a tranquility, the presence of God. You know, sometimes you walk into a home and it's like, okay. And then there are times you walk in and you go, Ooh, there's something special. There's something special in the air. God is here. And I thoroughly thank you. Thank you for having me in your home. You were so gracious. And she showed me around and I got to see that, that chapel. And, um, you know, it was just a home where you knew that God lived. And so I, I'm always looking for, does your walk mat match your talk? And it does with her. So for everyone on the line, if you're wondering, hmm, this all sounds good. I've, I'm a witness that she lives what she speaks. And uh, that is the thing that encourages my heart the most. And I, 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 I've claimed her as a sister. She doesn't know it, but she's my sister. <laughs> she's my sister because I, we resonate 
on um, what we believe. And I think that we're both very, very adamant about glorifying God. You know, this is the kingdom. This is kingdom mindset. Uh, we are not of this world. And nope. I think that that's something that she knows inherently in her, in her inner core, that um, she's been sent, wrapped around the purpose of God to fulfill a specific assignment. And if we all understand it and, and, and walk in that, we too can accomplish what she's accomplished. You know, right. I mean, she's one child of God, but God is no respect of person. So be encouraged and know that uh, what God can do for one, he can do for all as we Absolutely. remain obedient to him. We're each called to different things, but it's possible. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and glory for her life, for my sister's life. Oh God, you've accomplished so much through her because of her willingness to submit and obey. You said that you prefer obedience over sacrifice. You've also promised that uh, you add wealth to us and add no sorrow. That promotion comes from you and that you've given us access to everything that you own and you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Right now, Lord God, I decree wealth beyond her comprehension. Amen. She feels that she has had wealth, but I'm adding wealth onto wealth. Amen. At this year of 70. 70 Amen. is a very significant number. Seven is completion. She has completed a cycle in her life and is headed towards new beginnings where you are going to express yourself and reveal yourself in ways beyond her comprehension and even imagination. Unto you who are able to do more than we can ask or think or even imagine in our hearts, I pray that you would blow her mind Father, that you would actually exceed her expectations and her imaginations. And I know that she has a vast imagination, but Father, you are bigger even than that. Lord. And so, Lord God, I pray peace over her home, a continued atmosphere of your glory reigning there. I pray for unity in her family. I pray that the Spirit of God would meet each visitor that comes to her home. I pray that continue to bless the work of her hands and cause it to expand and flourish beyond what she even plans, Lord God. I pray for love in greater measure between her and her spouse, Lord God, that, that their walk together would be such a glory to you, such a testimony of the unity that you created in heaven between men and women. I thank you, Lord, for all of her ventures, Lord God, that as she increases, she would continue to be a blessing to many, Lord. That you give her wisdom on what to disperse and what to hold on to, Lord God. As many come knocking and calling, I am sure. I pray, Lord God, that you give her a keen sense of discernment to Amen. where you want to invest Amen. and where she should wait. Amen. I pray for keen insight. I pray for even greater hearing of your voice. I pray for health and strength in her limbs. I pray for perfected health, divine health, to flow from the top of her head to the tips Amen. of her toes. Amen. I pray for unity among her staff. And I pray Amen. that anyone that's a plant of the enemy would be uprooted and cast out in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. I pray for peace within all her borders, enlargement Amen. of her territory, continued Amen. promotion and elevation as she glorifies you every Amen. step of the way. Amen. I pray, Lord God, that the blessings of the Lord will continue to overtake her, that goodness Amen. and mercy will be her constant companions, that Amen. they Follow her daily in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, God, that she would awake to your divine kiss each and every morning and Amen. be so aware of your presence. Lord, Amen. that it would, it would engulf her like a thick cloak, Lord, that it would rest heavy on her, and that Amen. wherever she goes, your favor would precede her, that, you, that there would just be doors open, effectual doors of opportunity to the Amen. left. Amen. I thank you for increase. Thank Not just in the natural Lord, but in her soul. Amen. I pray that that would be her greatest wealthy place, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. I Amen. Pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless oh, you. Wow. I'm wow. blessed. Thank you so much. So, so before I end, I would love to um, highlight the books. 
and I share the website on um, the chat group as well. So there's the Mysteries of Marriage Unveiled. Um, is a lamp onto my feet, 100 days of heavenly manna. Then there is the second, the sequel to the um, autobiography, which is um, blossoming with the hand that gives the rose. And then finally, we have answers to marital hiccups. <laughs> so you can purchase all these books on the link that I shared on the chat group. Please, please support her, spread the word. And we're hoping to um, find time within um, um, mom's schedule to do something in Ghana. I will try and coordinate it. I know she's very busy, but we would love to, to host you here. <laughs> so we'll try and find time um, in your very busy schedule. But then in the meantime, you can find the book. I'm going to share the link again um, on, on the chat. But please do support, reach out, buy a book. I'm buying a few books. In fact, we're purchasing um, at ACP a few copies that will give to the first three um, people that registered to be part of this conference. And that is our gift to you because we believe that you will be blessed by whatever it is that Apostle Polaroshal uh, Alakija has put in these books. You'll be blessed. So definitely don't forget to, to purchase. Thank you again, Mom. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, bless thank you. you. God richly bless you. So it's we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank, thank you, Pastor Leslie. Thank you, Pastor God bless Michelle. You both. God bless you both. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>